Okay, so as you can see, really pushed on. Looking the part now. Um, so basically we've installed all we spoke about before. The wing fold is installed and put in, um, and it was just washed the same as the other way. Probably needs a little bit more grease work in there, things like that, but pretty much there on. It's just a case of getting them all level and fitting correctly, because when you put it on, you've just got the pin, it sort of fits over the pin, uh, and then you have the trouble with it is that it can lean back and forward. So what I tended to do is try and line up the little gates uh, as it fits together, as it interlocks together. If you keep them both the same, then you come up to the top here and you can make sure you've got them both at the same angle. So when you're looking to head down it, they're both at the same position. And obviously from above, they're, they're there as well. I haven't glued them. Now this is probably gonna come back and bite me later on because I'm going to knock it or something else like that. Um, I'm feeling because it's got the braces on there that it's strong enough to probably hold it that it'll be absolutely fine but my way of looking at it is if it takes a knock and it comes off I can easily replace it, put it on, things like that. Um, but as I say with yourself I would probably glue it into position and fix it totally. So anyway we've gone along, we put it in the bottom cage as you can see that electronic cage at the back, pretty straightforward no problem at all and we have finished up doing so is it on about it for these wings they say they're not finished but you can probably see underneath we finished there in those areas the pylons are on and everything else as you can see like that so the other thing as well with this wing fold it is so lousy and hangs around that you're probably better off fixing it and to be honest doing this and trying to show you is a nightmare for me i'm probably going to lock it in place as well a little bit later going to do a pva glue um it's my new best friend if i'm honest one thing i've learned from this particular build is pva glue is great as a sort of safety net so you can super glue a little part in place thin some PVA glue and put that over the top of the super glue it goes crystal clear you'll never seal it but it makes that bit of reassurance because when you knock super glue and we've all done it it pings off nice clean break but if we can stop that from happening and obviously the PVA glue won't allow that to happen so you've got the strength of the super glue with the hold of PVA glue so best of both worlds anyway so that's gone together you can probably see as well that the engine is now on all right so and it is a heavy old lump this now we've got to this stage all right and then grabbing it is obviously always a bit of a problem. But as you can see, so here's the engine on there. It's just that brace. All we've done literally is just paint it up and put it in there. But you can see that wing fold system looking really, really nice. And the engine is on there. Now, you know, it's very difficult. I haven't got brilliant references with this engine on here. I'm assuming it would have hoses and that hanging off of it as well where they've been disconnected. Maybe something we could do, just add a few on there uh, as we see fit to make it look like it's hanging down and everything else. The big thing is though, because it's in maintenance is going to be covered in remove before flight tax which is something we've done down in here hopefully you can see them down inside the cockpit area I'm getting both cameras down there this top one's probably working a bit better today as you can see so we've got a couple off the lap belt so that's the one for the pull handle that is the safety net for those we've got a couple on the top here you can probably see them on the top here um, that's for the ejector seat at the top and also there's a, a, an arming one that always hangs down below in the middle so that's those taken care of now for all of those i've used 148 scale purely because when you look at the 132nd scale we've got them here if I swivel this round, as I say, because of its size and complexity, as you can appreciate, it's a bit of a handful. If I just bring this top cam down a bit, you can see. Now, what we've got is in a situation where we've got our seats and everything else, and if we compare it to, as you can see, these are on here, and they look in pretty much in scale, whereas this is what Eddard would sell you for a 132nd scale kit it looks to me far, far too big. And I can't imagine that hanging down there looking as if it's in sort of scale. So I've gone ahead and used the 148 scale removed before flight tax. These bigger ones, perhaps they'd be better on the outside. Uh, certainly the pylons all have them. The tail hook has to have one. Uh, so does the nose gear and obviously the main gear all have pins, safety pins. So obviously the gear can't sort of retract or sort of fail or anything else when it's in there. So putting them around is pretty much a doddle um, my crimpling technique, which is, let's move this guy slightly out of the way, is a little bit odd. If I show you on this bigger one, obviously they come photo etch parts and they are dead flat, okay? What I tend to do is start at the top and I just got a pair of tweezers and I give it a bend up and down a few times and then I'm going to work my way down 
and all we're trying to do is just put small little kinks into it. Now because they're fabric they do tend to lay quite flat unless you've got them on a seat okay and then coming back up making bigger twisty movements and what this will do hopefully you can see it on here gives us a sort of a fluttered look then what you can do once that's on there is twist it okay so you can twist it back and forth on itself a few times just to give yourself a look as if it's perhaps a little bit of movement in the wind and that's all I do. Do them like that. And then to be honest, we'll do it on this one here. This has got a hang down pin, which is quite nice. So all we're gonna do is just use a drop of super glue. So usual thing, not too much with these. And this guy goes up for that locking secure pin. Okay, up in here. And hopefully it will hang just at the back there, which camera will be best for this one. You can see it hanging in the back. And because it's on a bit of cord like that, it says it's just falling off, it should give a little bit of movement as well. Now, the other way of doing it, let me just get this guy up in here. So I'm losing its tack now. Okay, Ooh, I'll put him on prop in a minute. The other thing you can do, obviously, is take a smaller scale one, which is my preferred choice. Okay, so we've got some of these here. So we just snip these off. And off the top. So what I tend to do, I make the hole a tiny little bit bigger because it's a little bit too small that, so we just use a scribing tool and just make it a little bit bigger then we come along with our little lead wire here so I've got a little bit of two mil uh, point two mil even okay and then coming in from the side you pushed from because it'll make a little dent you can just flip it through okay and you can then use the lead wire to make your actual pin itself because these are normally attached to a pin so if you want to you can roll them together something like that and then hook it off okay and you've got a pin system so on something like this normally with the pylon for instance this pin will sit in here okay and will be the remove before pin and it locks the pylon so it can't nothing can fall off of it, it's a physical uh, lock in there and that's all you're doing with all of them. So most removed before flight tags are attached to some type of pin. So by doing them on there and then say usual thing, you can just come along as we do here and just crimping up and down to start running up and down twice, up and down there. It, what it does, it puts in minute little textures into the metal which stop it looking really two dimensional, okay. So we have something like this guy here, and we'll try and do this one without making a total hash like the last one. Okay, so we do this, and then we're just going to sit this guy, or well, hopefully in a minute, he will stick just in the side, <clears throat> just like that, okay? And it just gives you that thing of movement and everything else. And really, that is it. Everything else is going to be a soft fit. I've also done a couple of little touches down here. You might see just inside here, we've got that wire hanging down. All that is, is okay, it was two mil rolled together, the same as we did wiring loops everywhere, painted green, and it gives it that effect of a cable hanging down. Because of how we got our structure set up, and I must admit, want to display the cockpit open so people can see properly in it, I'm still gonna do it with a little bit of white tank. It's grease free, and I can sit that just down in here into the correct position just to hold it on just like that okay so what I'm going to do now to be honest I'm going to fix those wings okay remove before flight tags all the way over it and that will complete our build all ready for the reveal okay and there you go there you have it completely finished off now as I say we've gone along glued in these final little bits and pieces to be honest I've put the nose on PVA glued it again it's nice because you get a little bit of movement PVA glued everything in place PVA glued these wings on so now feeling a lot more better a lot more structural 
what can you say? Um, a very long build. We haven't done a long build like this in quite a while. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it and haven't got sort of lost along the way and bored with it and everything else. I wanted to cover specifics in a lot of detail and bring them over to you as clear as possibly. So a lot of this was we did uh, a little bit of flapping around showing about sort of re-riveting and all those areas which you really need to do on a kit like this. We then went along and showed you really intense ways about doing things like filler. Okay, so about talking filler intakes, we covered that quite extensively. And then we looked at scratch building, doing it the simplest way possible. I didn't want to lose you along the way and try and make it over complicated and everything else. That's not the way I work. I like to show you the most simplistic way and easiest way to get the best results for the minimum amount of time. And hopefully we came through with this one. And a couple of things like that is doing something like we've done here, and have this engine hanging out, which I know I, to be honest, I put this up on my personal Facebook page um, a couple of days ago, and a lot of people were there saying about, you know, like, what is that, you know, and it's only when you explain that it's what the intruder did. It's capable of having its engine on its own mount to be worked on. It's not there to be used for propulsion. It's literally just to be worked on. And it, what a cool idea it was and everything else. And when I first saw that photo, it was like, right, that's what we're gonna do. You know, originally I had visions of this being being tooled up and armed and ready as if it's ready for the wings to be folded down and go for the cat shot. So on the carrier deck with lots to remove before flight tags and everything else on there. As soon as I saw that, I thought, never seen it done before. Nobody's done it as far as I'm aware. So I thought I'll give it a go. Um, and because of that, it then makes a few complications. Like immediately the uh, bay underneath, it's hollow. Okay, there's nothing in there. You can just see the top of the fuselage. So we needed to take care of that and to cover it up and everything else. So immediately it was a, a case of, right, what's gonna be the easiest way, quickest way, simplest way of doing that? So plastic card sheet, we use some um, styrene strips that we had here and we made up a basic framework. Even cutting it was done very basically. It's a case of, yeah, that'll do a few marks and everything else. And we went through and we showed that quite in detail how to do that. So you come along, this is where he says it doesn't all fall apart. Okay, and we come along with something looking like this, okay? So you've got nice detail down here with the engine sort of showing in there. We get the right camera angles. As you can see, all this going on, all the plumbing work, everything in, and then hopefully, as you can see, it really adds a lovely, bit of depth to it it gives a new character to the model that it's not just armed it's not just you know in maintenance got the engine out and it's being worked on so we've tried to recreate some of this plumbing work down the bottom here but hopefully as you can see with both engines on there like that it gives us a nice feel to the model and it certainly is a talking point <laughs> there's no doubt about that okay um, so then it was just a case of right okay we've done that now we're going to think about obviously painting and weathering in it because we've got the engine out and then my sort of mind starts to roll with it and I know some people have said it's not very realistic and it's over weathered and you don't see them that dirty I beg to differ I've got reference shots all over this place showing these jets pretty mucky towards the end of deployments and on tours and things like that so I don't think it's over the top but if it is it's personal choice I like it like this so I don't really care what anyone else thinks and that's what your model should be as well that you have got to a position where you like it and you enjoy it so don't worry what anybody else says to you about it as i said going through showing you this weathering you know yeah there is loads of different ways and there's lots of products out there on the market but we basically just went through for the cockpit we used a basic ink wash nothing particular to you know smart or impressive with that it was basically done washed over dry brush job done we used a little bit of uh, the light wash in there for the instrument panel detail which we showed in depth we then went along i showed you how to do walkways to get this nice texture this nice dead flat texture that you might be able to see on these walkways and everything else and as i said it was just one of those things where you know up in the air pressure neat paint and really just make a a bit of a mess of it and everything else like that but it gives you a really nice sort of feel a texture to it and everything else just try and avoid a bit with the wash then it was a case of going in with the paintwork which i know is a little bit drawn out and i had a couple of people say to me about you know um it's a little bit over the top because we had in there obviously it was we did it over two and a half hours of video to show how i get this type of paint effect so it's a thing about using multiple shades of painting so basically the first coat that goes down is obviously going to be your primer coat get those in no problem at all then we're going to come along and you're going to do your sort of pre-shading things like that that is just your basics of um, you know your weathering techniques then we went along and we use then the top coat went through we use bleaching techniques post techniques and then obviously weathering techniques on and on and on right the way through till we gave this thing grease lines underneath by using sponges full of neat paint and everything else and showed you the simplest way of doing it basic wash straight over the top which was the 
easy bit and then assembly. But I have to say, it was a real joy to work on. I enjoyed every single minute of this kit. I've built kits before and they fought me all the way. This hasn't. This is probably, I would have to say, Trumpeter's best kit to date absolutely loved it i've had no problems with the construction of the kit whatsoever it's worth every single penny to have an amazing detailed kit as well with this we've got both engines you simply updated it a few little bits of wire in there and that's all we've used extra on this so really when you think about it we've turned a bog standard out of the box kit with a few bits of lead wire a few removed before flight tags and a little bit of styrene sheet and we've turned it into this which is absolutely stunning i've really enjoyed this build i hope you've enjoyed the build and if you have join me again next time